Good morning, everyone. I'm Megan Cullop, along here with Scott Micklin. Good morning, Megan Cullop. Good to Good. see you. Good to see you. Monday, November 2nd. Yeah. Happy new month. New, I know. I think we should celebrate every new month in this accursed year. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Well, like, yeah. I agree. So there you go. Week 34. Week 34. You can't even see that it's Whew. week 34. I always have to do a sigh because it gets me every time. Yes. There it is. It's even hey. been confirmed <laughs> yeah. by our loyal listeners, loyal viewers and listeners. So thank you very much. But here we are, week 34. Mm -hmm. This is our COVID-19 Community Information Program. We have some uh, good information coming up today. We got As two, two guests um, talking a little bit about job retraining um, for folks if maybe they're thinking about a career change because maybe their job is a little uncertain. Yeah. At this point. Sure. Um, and then we're going to hear too about some new qualifications, which I think are easier for businesses to apply for COVID relief funding from um, some of the governmental entities in the area. So that's kind of what we've got up our sleeve today, everybody. So we're glad that you're here to, uh, to join us for that. Um, we'll start by talking about testing like we always do. Great. And as we uh, take a look, you can see uh, coming up today here at San Juan College, we've got testing for another half an hour or so here this morning. And then again this afternoon from 3.30 until 5 p.m. here at San Juan College. Again on Wednesday, November 4th from 8 to 9.30 in the morning. And again on Friday, November 6th from 8 a.m. until 9.30 a.m. Here no at election day College. testing. No election day testing. I think they want you to vote instead of coming to get a test. Okay. You know, so you've got other that things to do. That would be an do. interesting You've got other things to do on Tuesday. Yeah. Unless well, you've I've already, already voted. voted. You've already voted? Yes. Good have for you. you. Voted? I have voted. Okay, I voted good. a week ago Tuesday. Good. Yeah. Great. There's no way. Check. Check that off. Social what media does not know I already voted because I'm still getting reminders every 15 minutes. I know. From Facebook. I know. Which we appreciate, but enough, Facebook. <laughs> Thank you. You mean well, but no. Ugh, what, a, what a group of naggers. <laughs> yes. But I appreciate the reminders. For folks who haven't, um, again, I think anyone who doesn't know Tuesday's election day has been living on another planet. Yeah. And I think even the space station folks have voted. I think so. You know, yeah, we did a see it. Uh, yeah, there was a story about that. So that was really interesting, actually. Right. So anyway, so there you go. Do they send it in a mail, <laughs> like a little? I think they probably do it mail by, pod by email. I'm sure. Don't they you do. think? Yes. I would think that's probably how they. I'm assuming how they do it. Yeah. But yeah. So anyway, so that's what's that's what's going on. There's the testing dates, and uh, the way we're getting ready for our next guest. Great. Who is going to be calling us shortly? But she's not on the phone just yet. You want to look at numbers? We can then? look at we can look at numbers. Let me get back to uh, to looking at you and me <laughs> while we get the numbers ready to go. Cool. So there yeah. you go. But Johns Hopkins, of course, has been uh, keeping track of the numbers. And so we can go to that and uh, talk about those. Okay. And by we, I mean you. Yes, yes. That's my role. So U.S. confirmed cases are at 8,638,127. U.S. confirmed deaths are now at 231,000. 11 deaths in the United States and it's something crazy like it's basically equivalent to a 9-11 attack every day for the past weeks and weeks and weeks with those numbers yep right I hear what you're saying and then of course in New Mexico um, our numbers are still way up from where they were um, they're not as bad as they were uh, last week at least this is the numbers from Sunday everyone so another 747 new cases across New Mexico on Sunday for a total now of 47,232 cases, 11 new cases here in San Juan County. So our numbers are still fairly, uh, fairly low. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen them single digits. This is just uh, low double digits, but still um, a concern if they do get higher. Um, eight deaths in New Mexico yesterday for now more than 1,000. And, of course, the governor ordered flags at half staff when that number topped 1,000. And one of those deaths was from New Mexico. And then uh, our recoveries are now at 21,623, so another 53 um, recoveries after that. So. I was wondering why the flags were at half staff, but I feel like they've been at half staff forever. Well, maybe for different reasons. Yeah, but, I guess but so. But the, the current reason is for the 1,000... Um, mark of, of deaths from COVID-19 in, in New Mexico. So that's what's going on with that. And I'm just sending the phone number to call in for our first guest to make sure she has that. So that's why I'm pausing a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, we can look at the Navajo Nation numbers and you can see they had 73 initial cases on Sunday. And so again, that was um, their numbers for a total now of 11,828. And of course, um, 
no additional deaths from the Navajo Nation, so that number stands at about 581. And their recovery numbers are 7,546. So again, um, that's the recovery numbers from the Navajo Nation. And, and we haven't had a curfew there in a while, have we? They've still been doing the weekend curfews. Oh, really? They're, they're still doing them, yeah. Every weekend? Every weekend. Okay. As far as I, as far as I know. So they're still locking down from Friday to Monday. Okay. So that is still going on. But yeah, it's good to know. That's the plan. So anyway, but we are getting ready to uh, welcome our first guest to the show. So that uh, will be coming on just a moment to talk a little bit about some uh, job retraining. Yes. And uh, longest you know. acronym I've ever seen in my life. Really? Yeah. Okay, we'll talk the about Southwest that. Teacher Quality Partnership SWTQP. Well, there you go. That's a lot. That's a lot of stuff. I, I hear you, but that's okay. It's okay. We'll, we'll be talking about that. Yeah, I. Uh, you want to talk about? Well, we. I guess we mentioned last week the hospital situation, didn't we? How it's that maxing so out many, in yeah. certain states. Yes, we talked about Utah, to. right? Because you were amazed that I read the Salt Lake Tribune. I am amazed <laughs> that you read the Salt Lake Tribune. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. they were talking about having to ration care possibly yes. in the Salt Lake City area because their hospitals were becoming so overwhelmed with COVID patients. Yes, and even in New Mexico, I think there's some conversations about that that would be uh, could be a concern in some of the hot spot areas of New Mexico. I think so far, as we've heard from our local hospital folks, we're not in that problem um, danger here. But um, certainly the Las Cruces area, yeah. uh, the Roswell area, um, even maybe some of the Albuquerque hospitals are, are getting concerned about some of the, the in upticks in cases. Yeah. And we do know our hospital here is preparing for that they possibility. They are. Correct. Rationing care is pretty scary, I think. Right. Well, if you remember, they, the, you know, the San Juan Regional for a while had to stop elective surgeries because we weren't sure how many COVID patients we were, they were going right. to get, and they were trying to just maintain capacity. Yeah. And so that could be where we, where we go. That could be, yeah, that could be where we go. And so uh, I know they're watching that, and we'll get Jeff Bourgeois on probably to talk about that if it gets to be a concern locally. That's right. But, so keep uh, your knees healthy, old man. Yeah, <laughs> or backs or whatever. Hips, don't fall. Be careful. Be careful. Everybody. I will. Now that it's going to get icy. Yeah. Salt those sidewalks. That's that's right. Exactly. Yes. So anyway, and we're also going to hear from Devin Neely. He is for San Juan County, who's going to be calling in today to talk a little bit about, um, as we mentioned, some of the new uh, qualifications for um, these COVID assistance grants and loans for local businesses. Uh, the state has released some more money to local governments to then dole out to businesses in their communities. And so um, some of the qualifications have changed. I think it's gotten um, easier to yes. apply, and maybe uh, maybe smaller businesses um, can apply. And so he's going to be talking a little bit about uh, about some of that with us too in the next few minutes. So we're just waiting for them to call in. Good, because it's live. Yeah, and here I, we are. Here we are. I know. I'm looking. <laughs> I'm looking yeah. for uh, some uh, fun fun little stories for ah, us. That's okay. I think we're good. We oh, have, good. We have a caller. Okay, good. Okay. We, we have a caller on the phone. So let us go to the phones, and uh, we'll find out who this is. Good morning. You're on KSJE. Thank you for calling in this morning. Good morning, Scott. It's Devin Neely from San Juan County. Devin Neely, we just said your name, and you appear. You're like a phantom. Uh, I was going to go with Beetlejuice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there you go. Devin, Devin, uh, Devin. And here yeah, he is. Poof, poof, here I am. That's right. Thank uh, you for calling in. Good morning, in. Megan and Scott. Thank you for having me on, on this morning. I'm uh, glad we can talk a little bit about uh, one more way we're working to get some help for our uh, local businesses. Excellent. And uh, we've been talking a little bit about that, Devin. And so as far as I understand it, there is some new, um, a new pot of money, if you will, from the, from the state that has been divided and divvied out to the governmental agencies and with some differing uh, restrictions, correct, or, or different application rules? Correct. Same, same money uh, that's okay. already available, but uh, it is now a little bit, uh, easier uh, and available for more businesses to apply for this money. Uh, this is federal uh, small business assistance grant funding. This is not a loan. This is a grant, and uh, all four local jurisdictions uh, applied for that. So Kirtland, Farmington, check that. I guess that'd be five, huh? Kirtland, Farmington, Bloomfield, Aztec, and San Juan County all applied for this funding. Uh, from the state of New Mexico for businesses within their jurisdiction. And if a business is registered in a specific jurisdiction, they may apply to that jurisdiction for uh, this grant funding. And the grant funding is 
between $5,000 and $15,000 uh, based on some criteria that uh, businesses can use for uh, not only paying for um, uh, rent and utilities and things of that nature, but also if there are uh, necessities to continue that business with COVID safe practices in mind, they can pay for uh, shields and PPE and things of that nature to make sure that they can still operate in a uh, COVID sensitive world. So um, we're, we're administering those funds on behalf of the state of New Mexico and there were a lot of rules put in place by the state of New Mexico as far as who would qualify and how much they qualify for. And as of Wednesday, the state has loosened some of those requirements. So now businesses with an annual revenue of up to $5 million a year are considered a small business and eligible for this grant. Uh, businesses who employ up to 100 people uh, are now qualifying, and there was a restriction on uh, how long the business has been in operation uh, that has now been reduced somewhat, and we have some more opportunities to uh, vet and prove actual uh, losses and reduction in revenues uh, if you if a business has been in operation for less than a year. That makes sense. And how does this play into, or not play into, but we have these restrictions on, say, restaurants and stuff, but are restaurants still eligible even if they're not able to be actively serving people? Correct, yeah. Uh, if you can show that your business has been impacted negatively by uh, shutdowns, curtailment of business, whatever that is. If you can show us that uh, and meet the other basic requirements, then that business is eligible for grant funding. So this actually uh, even applies to nonprofits. If a nonprofit shows us that there is a reduction in donations, we can uh, provide them some funding based on the number of employees and, and other, uh, other criteria. Understood. And Devin, would, again, folks have to apply to the entity at which, in which they're located, or is the county handling all these applications countywide? Or if I'm in the city of Farmington, is the city of Farmington taking these applications? Uh, the latter is correct. If you are a registered business, if your business registration or business license is the city of Farmington, you apply to the city of Farmington. If it's Kirtland, uh, town of Kirtland, Aztec, Bloomfield, San Juan County, et cetera. Um, in San Juan County, we know that not all businesses are registered with the county because this uh, requirement to be registered with the county is relatively new. Uh, and so there, we, we're still offering the opportunity for businesses to apply for a registration if they don't have one already. Uh, and we're trying to get those registrations processed so that these folks will be eligible for the, for the money. But at this point, um, each individual entity has their own money, and each individual entity is handling their, uh, the businesses within that jurisdiction. Got it. But the, but the qualifications uh, apply to everybody, correct? It's not different from county to city. That's correct. And the, the award amount is actually the same from county to city. Uh, and, and we were very intentional and we worked very closely uh, with our partners at the other municipalities to make sure that everybody's on the same page. And, uh, you know, so, so if you have between one and 10 employees, you're eligible for $5,000. From 11 to 50 employees, you're eligible for $10,000. And for 51 to 100 employees, you're eligible for $15,000. And that, that's across the board, each, each entity. And there may be minor uh, differences in the application process, but generally the application process is, is a, uh, extremely similar, similar and the award amounts are the same across all the uh, municipalities and the county. Great. And uh, do businesses on the reservation qualify for these funds? You know, if they are a registered business to San Juan County, they would qualify, uh, even if they are on Navajo tribal land. And I don't exactly know how the jurisdictional requirements are uh, as far as that goes. I, I don't know how many businesses in San Juan County on the Navajo Nation are actually registered uh, to the county, but uh, they would be eligible for the funding should they uh, be registered and apply. 
Very good. Well, Devin, we appreciate you calling in this morning to share this information. Of course, as things kind of change a little bit, it's important to get that out to our businesses because we know there are a lot of folks who are maybe not operating at 100% capacity and uh, and maybe could use some of these uh, these funds to kind of fill in the gaps a little bit. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your time, Scott. And uh, I would encourage any, any businesses to uh, explore the application process through the individual entity through which they're registered or licensed. Uh, there's still a lot of money waiting to be claimed. And, and I know here at San Juan County, I think we've only had uh, five or six businesses which have applied for and been accepted into the program, and some have already received their funding. So we have to have applications into each entity by December the 1st, by December the 1st, uh, and this money will be um, allocated before the end of the year. So uh, the, the clock is ticking. It sure is. That's less than a month away. So, great. Devin, thank you very much. Thanks, Scott. All right. Take care. It's Devin Neely from San Juan County talking about these new um, qualifications for some of this COVID relief funds that's now available throughout San Juan County and throughout, again, the five entities, as Devin was mentioning, the cities. Um, and if you're on the reservation but in the county, you would you would qualify, sounds like to me. So, yep. there you go. Very good. Let's go to our next guest. Great. Next guest is on the phone. Good morning. You're on KSJE. Thank you for calling in this morning. Good morning, Scott. How are you doing? I am well, thank you. This is Sandra Houston. Sandra, thank you for calling in. We appreciate it very much because you have some interesting information about, as we were talking, um, some maybe job retraining, job opportunities for folks who maybe ever wanted to get into the education field, right? Yes, that's right. And uh, Three Rivers Education Foundation, which is in Farmington, has written yet another fabulous grant for the tune of seven million point four. It's a five-year grant, and what we're going to do is recruit. We're going to recruit people with bachelor's degrees who have, and the stipulation is, who have never before been a certified teacher or taught as a certified teacher. What we're going to offer these people with a BA is a master's degree in education and uh, basically what we looked at is our demographics and we looked at also what is needed right now. So we're going to offer this to people who would like to get a K-12 through special education degree, you know, a master's degree, and or people who would like to embark upon the teaching profession in high school math or in high school science. Um, what we can do if they partner with us and one of our districts in the Farmington area or Four Corners region throughout New Mexico, and also this is going to include Colorado, what we will do is offer them a stipend of $55,000 to pursue that master's degree and get that done. And we will coach them, support them, uh, get help them get going. And um, it's pretty exciting. That is exciting. And now you mentioned BA, so Bachelor's of the Arts, but um, it seems like if you were teaching science or math, like does a Bachelor of Science count? Uh, so listen, Megan, here's the deal. If someone has gotten... Uh, say 30 credits, um, perhaps with that emphasis on um, math. I mean, maybe someone from the engineering field has decided that they want to go in a different direction. And so we're taking people who already have a bachelor's degree, right, just a BA, and then what we'll do is we'll coach them in that process of getting an MA in the education field, and that would be, as I said, K through 12 uh, special education, that's what they need to go for in this master's degree program, or they would get a master's degree in science or math, and that would also be what's called an MED, Master's of Education. Does that answer your question, Megan? 
Y- yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. And so, Sandra, yeah. talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, this, is, this seems a little bit even more than what we hear about being offered here at San Juan College because that is just mm-hmm. uh, the alternative licensure program, but this is for a master's degree in, mm-hmm. in education plus this other stipend, uh, and you mentioned 55000 So is And so yeah. is that per year? Would this whole thing take about a year to complete, yeah. or what, how, normally, how long does it take? Yeah, here's how it goes. So our goal, and this is what our candidates would need to accomplish, is we'll give them the, what we would like, what I would like for my candidates is to have them begin in January, this upcoming 2021. Then they would do a summer semester, and then they would do one more semester in the summer. So basically it's two full semesters. 12 credits, 12 credits, the summer is nine credits. And they should be able to accomplish that with our support. Um, Basically, what they will also do is in the first semester, we will have them shadow a master teacher in one of our Four Corners districts. Now, this grant goes uh, over a number of at-risk districts in New Mexico, or you can call them the rural districts. So that's what what we would partner our candidates with. They would merely shadow a teacher who would be their mentor so that they can really understand what they would be signing up for and get a great groundedness in um, all of the things that would come to them as a teacher. So we are also doing that. Everything will be done virtually right now due to the pandemic, uh, due to the COVID. What we will do is our um, educational program, the MED courses, will be done virtually, long distance, as well as shadowing a teacher, which is rather unique. We're all Zooming along as we are this morning, right? So that would be the process and the procedure for this. Does that answer your question a bit? Yes, I think it does. Thank you. And I think, too, um, the idea then is folks should then apply now to get in part of this um, now. part of this oh, class that starts now. in January. <laughs> That's right. Because, you know, it takes a while to immatriculate. And, of course, to embark upon a master's degree, you also need to pass that entry exam which we're willing to support them in if, say, if someone might feel just a little challenged with the mathematics to uh, pass that entry exam, then, of course, I would support them in that tutoring, find them a tutor, and um, with that very generous, um, you know, piece that we have, this five-year grant, we can support them very well. Excellent. And so, Sandra, how can folks get a hold of you? I think we're showing your, uh, your phone number and your email address on the screen right now, but for our radio right audience. Right now, hang on, Scott. Right now, you're just showing the potential uh, required. There you go. Now, you can see the residency placement. Down below, as you look, I've even put a scan on there for them so they can actually go and scan and get every detail of this grant opportunity. Also, if you look at information and contact, people can contact me, Sandra Houston, regional coach on the recruiter, and it's shouston at threeriversed.org. And they can call me on my cell as well at 575-770-2161, and it's right there. You have it on the site right now, which is great. There you go. Great. Well, uh, Sandra Houston, thank you so much for joining us and uh, providing us information about this exciting program. Well, Megan and Scott, we love you guys. I watched your early morning show, and um, we're just pleased to have you in the area. Thank you very much. And again, a great opportunity, Sandra. So thank you for calling in and uh, sharing that with our our audiences this morning. We appreciate it very much. That is Sandra Houston, part of the Three Rivers uh, Education Foundation with another uh, opportunity for folks who maybe want to reach out or do something different with their career choices and uh, maybe get into the education field. So 
there that you was go. The time. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, the phone started. Anyway. Okay. Making. You got some place to be. Weird. No, you, you it okay? just started making okay. weird noises. I don't know what that's about. I don't know. Tech savvy, I am not. All right. Don't I know. do have an interesting story before we wrap up the show. Do you now? You ready for this? I'm always ready for one so, of your interesting stories. Thank you. So you put as, the int in interesting. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. So um, as coronavirus cases continue to spike and everybody gets used to maybe working remotely for those who are fortunate right. enough to have jobs that can do telework, apparently 14 million to 23 million Americans have been inspired to relocate because now oh, they can. Oh, sure. Right. I've heard about that. Yeah. I think they're relocating here. I hope so. You know. They should. If anybody's listening. Yeah. Yeah. From across the nation, this I, is a beautiful place to live. Our real estate friends would tell you that uh, they have they customers. They haven't had a problem. They yeah. have buyers for 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 houses. I mean, there's Which a shortage, or, or almost a shortage. But yeah, anyway, go ahead. A shortage of houses for sale for these buyers wow. that want to move here. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So there you so, go. So that's pretty cool. That is cool. I could see like if I was living in an expensive part of the world and working there, and then all of a sudden it's all of my work transfers online. I mean, why wouldn't you go to a cheaper cost of living? Sure. Well, or if you're in a studio apartment, you know. That's what I'm saying. And maybe you Trust could move me. into the suburbs and have a little bit of green space or something or a dog, you know. I know what it's like to pay an arm and a leg for a studio apartment. Do you? Been there, done that. There you go. But so, now you're now you're but now a, look a lovely where, look home where I am now. in a backyard and you're just missing the dog and the picket fence. That's right. We're getting you there. I don't do the, the no. beasts. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway. But no, that is a really cool thing. And that is part of, I think, you know, a lot of folks are wondering, you know, some of these downtown cores like, you know, San Francisco, New York, uh, Chicago, you know, and all these office towers that are half empty or more because these people are working from home. Yeah. So could be What a big are we going to do with those office buildings? Maybe we'll repurpose like them into like Amazon warehouses. Or something. Oh. Well, there's a difference. Wow. About <laughs> Wow! Personalities does right that, there. Does that not a, a perfect example of our differences? Wow! Wow! Vinegar and water. Here we yeah. go. Anyway. Yeah. Amazon <laughs> warehouse community outreach center. Ying and yang. Here we are. Ying yeah. And yang. That's so what thank makes you. us go together I'm so well. So Cream glad. and coffee. Okay. There you are, everybody. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> yeah. I think it's maybe time to it's so time say to wrap goodbye. this show up. But, but we, we will be back Thursday. We will, with exactly. More to come. We've got more coming up this week. So thank you. Again, uh, you can always go to ksje.com slash news for the latest. Um, and of course, State updates all the numbers every, every day. And we share those with you as well as the numbers from the tribe. But thank you for joining us, everybody. Stay safe and stay well. And don't forget to go vote tomorrow. Have a good Monday.